Hello, welcome. In this stage of the IV generator, we are ready to test it out in Unreal Engine. You can also open this in another game engine, of course, but here specifically for Unreal. So, of course, make sure you have Houdini Engine installed, and I already dragged my digital asset in here. So, I have this ready, so I have my digital asset, and I also have a materials ready already uh, for later stage, but I will talk about that more in a second. So, without doing anything special, I'm just going to grab my digital assets in the scene and see if we are getting something working already. And that's often how I would start with this, so just drag your assets in the game engine and see if it works. That's always like a good thing to do. So, by default, I just get this classic Houdini logo, which means that the tool is not calculating anything special. So, the tool uh, actually needs an input, so right now we are actually not defining an input. So we have Houdini inputs, which is basically none. So of course the tool doesn't know what to do. So we need to give it an input. So either you can pick something from the world. We can also just grab the sphere here. I uh, can make it a bit bigger. Now we can go into our tool and now we can say, select something from the world. So we want to pick an object from the world. And we're gonna say start selection. For example, select the sphere, use as selection. And then you can see that it will use that. So we'll now grow around that sphere. And we'll also like, you could see like hang, ivy, branches down. So those things are all already working really well here. So even though this is like a very simple, simple shape. So that's how we would do that. Uh, if you want something else, we can also just quickly grab a bunch of cubes, uh, place it like so. We can build something similar that we had, or we can do something else, like add a bit more variation. Then we just go back to our tool, we say start selection, we can uh, select multiple things by holding shift, and we can just say use selection. And then a few seconds later, we have done how have this result. So this is how the tool would work, you can just quickly say this object or that object, and you can just switch that quickly. So we have our base settings, so those are probably all working, so let's for example quickly add some branches on the side here. And you can see that we are now adding some more branches on the sides here. So we can have these little branches sticking out. You can also have like, for example, more hanging ivy. So that's all working. So the, the main thing that I need to configure is of course the material properties. So the geometry is perfectly fine. Uh, so we have our main branch and we have our ivy. So that's all fine. So Right now, I want to focus on making those materials. So let's take a jump back in Houdini. So in Houdini, we have a result like this here, which I had before. And what I also want to do now with my ivy here is you can see that currently what I have done before is I'm actually packing and instancing this. So I actually don't want to do this in my system. And you can see it will turn back to those leaf cards. So you can see that there is a difference here. Uh, we can always do like an unpack afterwards as well. It's just the same thing. So it's just like a toggle. Um, so in this case, we actually are uh, keeping that color, which I want to talk about more about as well in this video. So we have that now. And what we want to do is we want to talk about now specifically about the materials. So we can see that we had that UV. Uh, that's also the reason why I unpacked it. So we can actually just see the UV clearly. And this is representing something from uh, Megascans. So you can see that this comes from Megascans. So we have each UV shell presenting a certain branch or leaf. And we now want to assign those materials. So here we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just type in Unreal Material. And this node will be able to then directly plug in the material. So what we need to do for this fully to work is we need to paste a path where the shader is located in our project. So in Unreal, we need to find out what is the shader or material I want to use. So in this case, it's this one over here for me. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say get a reference. So this will actually get a reference on the location where it is in my project. Once we are going back into Houdini, we just remove this part and we're going to copy paste that reference. So it will look like this. So this is a material that you can find under game, IV materials, 
IV material. And we also want to do the same then for the branches. So these are the branch parts, and we can also again use a different material here. So we will use two materials. You can of course do this in one material if you're a bit more optimized with the textures, but in this case we're going to have two materials. In previous video, also special here, is I did not add any UV data. So if I switch to UVs, we actually need to go back to the sweeping node over here. And we can just simply go to UVs and enable compute UV. And it will actually just compute a large UV shell for this. So that's also done. Now back to adding that material, it's going to be the same as before. So we're going to jump into Unreal and grab a reference. So in this case, I have a very basic material here. So I'm going to right click get reference. Then we are going to remove this reference path, copy paste our own path, and that's it. So we now are going to select our tool and say save my tool. Now in here, the only thing we need to do is to click our tool again. We need to go all the way up and I'm going to say rebuild my tool. So rebuild will make sure we are getting like the recent most up-to-date version of the tool again. And this is done rebuilding and what we can see is now we're actually assigning that material. So we can have nice leaves, as you can see, and also the branches. So at this stage, again, I can go back into settings to tweak them. I think the scaling is, for example, getting very small here. So we can always go back to our leaf scale and we can just say, make this a bit bigger. And now they are somewhat bigger. Now, in terms of the material side, if you would be interested, uh, we have like a very basic setup right here. So it's nothing special here. Uh, so I have my maps from Megascans. But also importantly, if you noticed in Odini, I always had like that red color on the leaves. And that's actually something interesting that we can do with vertex colors. So going back here to Houdini, if I, for example, would look here again at those leaves, you can see that I had this red color. So this red color is actually used for, for example, adding a wind effect. So when the color is more red, that, that means that there will be more wind intensity. So we can use this to multiply by wind intensity. Um, I can also now color my uh, branches now in uh, value zero, so in black. So that means that, again, when I multiply a wind effect, so we're not basically adding that effect on our branches because the branching is sticking to the surface. Uh, what we can also do with a vertex color is, for example, adding a random value for each leaf. So, for example, uh, let's say I want to add a random value for each leaf. So I'm going to do a connection node. So we're going to check our connectivity. So now we have a class representing each leaf. Then I want to grab a wrangle. And in here, I want to say, for example, the color is now equal to a random value based on the class attribute and close that off. And you will see that we will now have random colors on leaves. So we're basically using this class attribute to define a random color for each leaf. So of course, I don't want to get rid of that this red color. So the red channel should be for wind intensity. And for example, then the green channel or the blue channel is then for something else. So I can just say that now I have this random value, but maybe we should not overwrite everything. So maybe I'm going to save this in a float called just random uh, value, for example. And random value, we want to store random value in the color of the green channel so we're going to now replace it like so. As you can see now, we are sort of like mixing things a bit more. Um, you can also then calculate something for, for example, the other channels. So we can now calculate something for the blue channel. You can, for example, calculate the gradient effect if you want to have like some gradient in there. Uh, so you can do all kinds of things. You can also just say, keep it to one. And then we have like this bluish in there. So we can do all kinds of things here uh, with vertex color. So that's really powerful to uh, play around with. So let's plug that in over here. And um, we can just call this, for example, vertex colors. 
and I'm gonna save my tool again. And here in Unreal, I'm gonna to go to my Ivy, and let's say we want to rebuild this. And I want to actually view my vertex color. So in the IV, let's use a vertex color node. And we can then plug that in over here, pressing save. And as you can see, we have that same result that I just built in Houdini. So now we can grab my base color and I can do, for example, like a huge, I can, for example, do like a huge shifting effect. Um, so we can grab our full texture and our shifting value is, for example, that random value that I've, that I have now stored in the green channel. So plug that in over here and press save. And maybe if I view it like so, you can see that we now have like random colors for each leaf. So maybe uh, for the time being here, let's also plug it in a massive so we can actually see it like way better. So we now have this random colors. So if you have like quite some knowledge about shaders, you can build a quite interesting network here to add more interesting effects and variations. So each time you generate an IV, it will actually look slightly different. So of course this is too much and you could, for example, just do like a lerp. Uh, you could, for example, just lerp between the random colors and the base value. And then you probably have something a bit more subtle. So let's grab it like so. As you can see, like this is a bit more subtle. So they are overall more going towards greenish colors. And now let's take a quick look at, for example, adding a wind effect. So we can just use the wind, grass wind, for example. There are, of course, other methods you can do this. And we can use that red channel in the intensity. And the result of this uh, will be used here in our world position offset. And before this to work, of course, we need to input like the weight, wind weight and values here. So let's plug in like a couple values. So let's start with one. And let's plug in uh, this value. And let's see how that goes. So you can see like it's maybe too much intense, but you can clearly see that our branches and the root part of our uh, leaves are not moving that much. So you can see that they still stick to the surface because of that vertex color. Um, so the only thing to do now is to actually just lower this to something a bit more subtle, like so. So there is some movement in those branches. And that's basically it then for this Ivy tool. Uh, so this is how we use the tool in Project Titan. What I would currently say on the downside is this is a higher poly count. Uh, so you, of course, need to make sure that you can have that budget. Uh, for example, like Nanite is also interesting with this. Um, but if you don't want this higher poly count, I will make one more video that actually talks a bit about baking down into actually something a bit more usable, probably for your project. So that was it for this video. So showing you how to open this digital asset in real. And I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.